Welcome to Meeple Town. Today we are talking about the most played games that we played in 2021. 2021. 2021. It's not 2021 anymore. It's 2022. But, but that's why gonna, we're looking back. That's right. That's right. What games do we play the most? And so I'm going to say this right off the bat. My number one game, I don't think is all that exciting. It's probably one of my least favorite on the list, but I play it a lot because it's a fairly quick game. So I don't want everyone to get all jacked up. All I excited. like this list. No, oh, I like oh, number one. Yeah, oh, I like my, yeah, one. I like the games. I like my number one. It's fine, but it's probably my least favorite out of all of these. And it's I just because it's short and quick and I have a lot of friends that are all into it. We're going to go pretty quick on this list. Try not to make the video too awful long. My number 10 most played games is... Kingdom Builder, Big Box. I actually got this, uh, I've played this quite a bit on the app and I got the actual physical copy for the first time this Christmas, my birthday, sometime in between, which was sometime in December. And man, I played it a lot just in December. That wasn't the only time I played it. Um, but Kingdom Builder is Builder is a, it's a, it's a great game, Dean. I know a lot of people don't like that you just you draw a card and you have to use a card. And what you're doing in the game is you're drawing a card, but basically you have objectives and you have these three objectives and you're trying to fulfill them the most you can. Maybe have the most, you know, building settlements on a on a horizontal line, have a bunch of or a bunch on one horizontal line or on as many horizontal lines as possible or connecting different things together. And it's it has that kind of carcassonne, right? Like super simple, grab this place place a building based on your card or buildings whatever and but it's a blast i i really like this game and the big boxes uh kicks it up a notch because you have different options and stuff you like kingdom builder i do yeah i i had this game got rid of it because no one liked it except me and i picked it back up because i said forget them i like this game. well you can play it so lickety split it's so fast and you're like every time you're done you're like Let's run that back. Lickety split. There it is. My number 10. I really like Kingdom Builder. Oh man, John approves. There you go. All right, my number 10 is kind of a weird one because I don't, this is a most played game. This is Sleeping Gods. This is the new one from Ryan. You played Rocket. the heck out of this game. Bro. I did. It's it kind of weird though because I, I, you know, if you count like one whole campaign as a game or whatever, I basically left it up on the table and then just played it. Um, I We played it. I soloed it. You know, lots of different player counts. But in Sleeping Gods, you are campaigning on your ship, the Manticore, and you are going out, this is like a 1920s setting, and you are going on quest. Really cool setting. It is. You're going on quest, you're going defeating monsters, but really, John, when he taught me this game, he said, what do you want to do? And that was it. Like, that's how we and started like, the game. There was no explanation of anything. Heck yes. Yeah, I loved it. Love the open world of this game. This is on a lot of people's list of, like, top 10 of the year. And it's so easy, like you said, to jump into the game. Yes. You don't have to talk about the battling until you get to battle, yeah. you know? And so... And even really then, cool. the battling's really cool, but it's also not super complex. It doesn't detract from the rest of the game. So I, I like it a lot. A Sleeping Gods, my number nine. My number 10. Number 10. My number nine is Four Gardens. So in this game, you've got a pagoda. You're spinning the pagoda around. You're gathering resources to fulfill these landscape cards. And uh, that's, you know, that's it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The cool thing I liked about it, you know, th this might be my least favorite, actually, but I still like it. It's good. Um, I'm actually, this one's going out of my collection. Is this one going to you? I think so. Okay, yeah. I think this I like one's this going one to Dean because he likes it more than I, but I still do really like it. Um, but the tightness of the resource management is what's mm -hmm. so good about it. You only have a certain amount of resources that you could do, so you're trying to manage the tightness of that with fulfilling the cards. And it's a, it's a, it's a great little game. Cool table presence. Four gardens. A lot of people like this one. Table presence is unreal, like you just mm -hmm. said. So it's, it's it can be a little bit. You have to spin it around and stuff, but it didn't really bother me. It was yeah. the resources around it that sometimes you have. It depends on how you place those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it's still, still a fun game. My number nine is a game that we played a lot in my family, and that's why this one makes it so high on the list. And that is, oof, that is Draftosaurus. And you talk about this game quite a bit. I do. This is an Antoine Bowser game, which I really, you know, I really yeah. like Antoine Bowser as a designer. In this game, you are drafting these dinosaur meeples. So you're keeping these meeples in your hand. You're going to take one, put it on your board, and then pass it around and go through some rounds of that, depending on how many players you have. And it really, like, this game is is super simple, but it's it works not just with my kids, but it's also really enjoyable for me because, like, the puzzly nature of trying yeah. to get the most points by having these types of dinosaurs in this different location. Like if I have all the same type of dinosaur, I can try to get the most points of this area. If I have the, all the different kinds of dinosaurs in this other area, and it all depends on also how the dice rolls. So if you roll the dice, 
and everyone else has to put their dinosaurs in those specific areas where you roll the dice, but you can place it wherever you want. And so it's it's got a little bit of randomness, but it's not too much, I don't think. I like this I've one heard, a lot. I've never played it, heard really good things about how quick and how it's such a great game in such a short, small package in a short time. Mm-hmm. I think this one's on Board Game Arena, too, if I remember right. I need so to give it a swirl. It'll be worth checking That's out. That's not the right words. That's <laughs> my number nine, draft a source. <laughs> you see me looking down at my phone, it's because I'm looking at my list, not because I'm checking text <laughs> messages. Uh, so my number eight is a game that just came out this year. It's going to probably, it will be on my top ten games of the year, and that is Cascadia. Uh, Cascadia is fantastic. I mean, you're drawing tiles, and the cool thing about it is, is not only are you drawing tiles and the way you place the tiles on the table matter, but also you have these tokens, these animals that you're placing onto the tiles and the way that those are positioned matter. And the objectives that come out, kind of like Kingdom Builder, where there's new objectives every time you play the games in different um, uh, sequences, but whatever. There's different ones every time. <laughs> Whatever. (laughs) Same thing here. And I think that that's really cool. And I like how you're like trying to have the most in certain landscapes than your opponents. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh man, Dean's got four of those mountain tiles. Maybe I can get five. And if you know me, I love those types of games. Yeah, it's just a great game, great tiling game in a package. It's pretty simple to teach, and I played it a, a decent amount this year, Cascadia. Yeah, I did too. This is actually just outside my list, and honestly, if we didn't have more games going on towards the end of the year, uh, I, the solo of this was fantastic, and I got oh, a few yeah. solo plays of this. I probably would have gotten more. All right, my number eight, eight is The Godfather. Corley really? Empire. You played The Godfather? I did. So if you listen to the podcast, we talked about these games. We kind of ran through them. My top ten, I had like six or seven tied for that same position or whatever. Um, Godfather, this was all played in one, like, one. weekend. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll say along those lines, I think my number ten, I only had like four plays of or something like that. Okay. Like Just because yeah. we play so many games, I yeah. haven't had the chance. So, so probably similar to you maybe, huh? It is. This one I've gotten played, uh, we played six times that one. Okay. Uh, and so in this game, this is by my favorite designer, Eric Lang. And Who you got uh, to meet at PAX I, Unplugged. I definitely did. Uh, this is an area control worker placement game. So it's it's a little bit of that hybrid, which I really like. Like the, the you have the the worker placement and the, the elements of, of a Euro game, but then it's very Amera thrashy in that you are also vying for control of these different uh, of these different territories, and if you get them, then you get bonuses whenever people place their workers on those areas later. And I just love this game. And you still <laughs> and I still haven't played it. And I think John, I, think I really do want to play this it. one too. If I there was a time, I think it wasn't it on like one of those thrift short stores or something for twenty bucks one day, yeah. and you were like, you should go get this, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, sure. And then I, I just slipped my mind, yeah. and then I never did. I picked this one up what for a bucks, which is sad because I don't think this thing is getting any more content. I I don't know why this one didn't get as much love. I mean, Blood I it's because it's, favorites, but because this is it's way up the there, Godfather. Too. Even though people love Godfather. It could be, yeah. But it's just like, sometimes people, if they don't like the IP, or it's not, the, not that they're super attached to it, you just, I am like that. Yeah. I just think, okay. Because I assume oftentimes with IP games, like it's more about the IP than it is the actual gameplay. And it's and funny of this one, it is a gangster theme. The theme comes out strongly, I believe, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a Godfather IP. It could be any yeah, you know, be gangster game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I love this game. It's it's a top, I think, 15, 20 games, something for me. So The Godfather, Corleone's Empire, number eight for Dean. My number seven is Gugong, which is uh, Andrea Steading game. That's really good. I mean, you have this all one these... surprised me for you. Yeah, but I, I played it solo a ton. Oh like, yeah, it was yeah. it was a time when my wife and I decided not to play games together because yeah. we <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> we got a little it was not healthy for our marriage. <laughs> uh, and so like, but I, it's it's a really cool solo mode. But I mean, of course, I've played it more than solo mode. But in this, you have these different sections of the board, and you're just trying to make all the all the. The pieces work together. They kind of are all like woven together. So to, mostly woven together. Uh, not every single thing. You can't do everything. But um, anyways, they all interact with each other. And you're playing these cards down and trying to, when you lay them down, I'm really doing a bad job. I'm botching this right now. I'm like, in my mind, it's like, you know, when you're go, like Michael Scott goes and he's talking and he's trying to find a place to land. And he's, he's like, like well, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> And eventually it's going to land. But you're playing one of your cards into one of these sections of the board and you have to play a card that's higher. And I think that that's kind of interesting in the game because you're going to be picking up the one that's lower and putting it into your discard pile for later on in the game, which is like, man, I really want this, but oh, I don't want that card, but I've got to do this action. And those simple pulls, those tugs in your heart as you're making decisions make a really fun game. And uh, Gugong's great. But I'm going to say something, even though it's not the same game, I think it's going to get... 
kind of less plays for sure this year because Batoku is better. Oh, oh, how about that? How about them apples? Plug it is. That. I haven't played this Plug one in a that. while, which is sad. I actually I haven't played this one at all this year, but I, I really like Gugong too. I think it's a fun game. Yeah. Okay. So my number seven, Gugong. My number seven is one of my favorite games again, which is nice that these are making my list. That is Lost Ruins of Arnak. This is a game that that is you will not the, stop talking about in the vein like a Dune Imperium, which also got a lot of plays uh, this past year and the year before. Uh, but in this game, you are you are moving mostly moving up this exploration track, like that's kind of the crux of it. But you're trying to get the most points, but that's where you get a lot of your points. And you do that by gaining resources, and then you're trading these resources in to move up on that track. You're going to be exploring different locations to get resources. You're going to be buying cards. But this is a slight deck building. I mean, it is. It's deck building and then worker placement, which is in, again, like Dune Imperium, like... Um, Endless Winter, some of those other games that are, are doing that now. And this has been, so far, my favorite of the ones that have been like fully released. I love this game a lot. Lost Runes of Arnak. Lost Runes of Arnak. So I, I, when he's talking about that, I'm thinking none of my top 10, I don't think, are even on this list. And I know this is really high in your top 10 is why yeah. it made me think about uh -huh. it, which is cool that you get to actually play one. This is just games. outside of my top 10, I think, this last yeah. year. I have, might have one top 10 game. I can't remember what I... Yeah, I think I do. Uh, but this is not one of them. Nine number six is a Stefan Feld game. And surprisingly, this Stefan Feld game didn't even make my top 10 Stefan Feld games. But it's the only one on this list. Really? It didn't? No, huh. no, but it's it's good. No, yeah. it's good. It's bonfire. It's and I game. think it's because it recently. When what year did that come out? Last year, twenty twenty. That's why. Okay. Yeah. yeah so bonfire yeah, has two a, years ago now. Yeah, I was <laughs> thinking it might have been twenty nine. Yeah. Anyway, it's got a really cool action selection piece to it. It's one of the reasons that I like to play it. The little you lay a tile, and then however many are like touching that of the same uh, icon or whatever. You get that many actions. You can see it right there on the screen. Like you get four blue action tokens or whatever. You know, if you're placing that right there for that. So I think that that's really fun. I also like how you're racing like, to those kind of objectives out on the islands. I like games where you're racing two things with players. Mm -hmm. Racing to the, um, are they, those are gnomes, right? Yes. I think that's it's right. Yeah. <laughs> like it. little racing yippies. to the little gnome objectives. And like, there's a lot of those kind of race two elements in this. In this game too, like I love how Stefan Feld games, this, all the things are woven together really, really well. And uh, I like it. I think this is a solid game. I played it a decent amount last year. Bonfire. All right. I was going to double check that. I'm pretty sure that was 2020 release because I think that made my top 10 last year. All right. My number, what was that number? Six. six. All right. My number six. Yeah. 2020. My number six is Strike. And this includes Strike and Harry Potter. It makes Potter sense though because you can play that so quick. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like a big reason for this one, we play it with the family. I don't, you have not played this one yet, right? Yeah, so, no, we oh, played it. Okay. You brought it one day, we played it. Yeah, so we played it some. Uh, my wife is a teacher. I've taught it to her students. It's just a really quick game to teach and, and quite a bit of fun. I like this one. Yeah, basically, you are you have this arena and you have these dice and you are trying to eliminate all the other players, uh, eliminate all of the dice that they have in their hand. You do that by throwing the die in the arena, and then you're also trying to come in behind and throw dice at those, and once you get uh, matches, you take those out and those go into your stash, and so that's it. That's the that's whole it. game. It's a lot of fun in the right crowd with not the right crowd. It's probably not as much fun, but yeah. I like it. Strike. Strike. All right, so mine, that's your number six. My number five is my favorite game on the list, and that's Grand Austria Hotel. I've talked about it a decent amount. An incredible game that um, for dice worker placement that you're you know, drafting dice. And, not, sorry, not dice worker placement. Dice drafting game. You're, you're drafting dice, and you're able to go and open hotel rooms and, and send your guests on as you collect resources back to their hotels, hopefully. And that might not sound super exciting to you. I think it's a cool thing. Everything like it. It, is so brilliant in this game, yeah. and it plays... I think relatively quickly, you know, you can play it in an hour or so, and it's just amazing. I just love this. If you like dice drafting at all, if you like Simone Luciani who designed this game um, at all, and you've never played this, this is a no-brainer. This is a classic. This is fantastic. I'm glad that I played it a decent amount last year. All right. right. Austria Hotel. Number five. My number five is Praga Kaput Regni, which is uh, Vladimir Suki, and in this game, you are taking not a lot of actions. You're basically taking a tile that has two options on it from this, this wheel that is going to be spinning around. And you take one of the actions on that. And it can be building, it can be going uh, across the bridge or going, you know, 
down this road. It can be um, bumping up your gold production or taking your gold production or same with stone. And this, it's just a, a game that I, you and I played. Mm-hmm. I've played it other places, but also it's on uh, Utah, which is a place that I've played online quite a bit too. I really, really enjoy this game, and it did not make my top 50, but the more I thought about it this past year, I think it probably will or be like really close to it, because I just, I've really enjoyed my plays of this. I don't know if it's my favorite. I still might prefer under. I do. I prefer Underwater Cities, but this yeah. is this is a second for me for him. It's weird. Like, I still haven't bought this, and I was thinking the other day, why? Like, I really, I need to play that again. I mean, I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it when I played it. It's good. It takes about 74 hours to put together once you get the game, but it's, it's that does not it. make me, I just got the Glenwork uh, expansion and had to sticker all these things again. It wasn't yeah. near as bad, but I was like. <laughs> the original one's a bear. Oh. Yeah. All right. That's your number five. My number four is a Steve Finn game um, and Edwarder Baroff. That's the Whatnot Cabinet. It's a new release too, right? Yeah, it is. And so the reason I play this lot is because it is lickety split click quick you're you are placing 12 tiles and the game is over like dean dean is not as big of a fan of this game i i, I don't love this i game like yet. it i love it i mean I, I mean i really enjoy it because like it's so dang tight and like you place your 12 tiles and you score and it's over and every time you finish the reason i played it a lot is because every time i finish it's like all right let's run that back and there's a little bit of luck involved, but it doesn't matter because the game is like 15 minutes long, potentially. Sure. You know, and so I, I really like that piece about it, but there's not, it's, I don't think there's tons of luck. We'll argue about that back and forth. I think it's a great design. People talk about Biblios all the time by Steve Finn. Gotta, gotta talk about the Whatnot Cabinet. It's it's a fun little game. It's not as good as Biblios, but. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Any of his other games. Yeah. yeah. No, no yes, you probably believe that actually. I'm just saying, like this well, one, I feel like not, flew again, under the, this, though, a like, little bit is... under the radar for just a fun, crunchy for what it is, yeah. 15 minute game. Sure, boom. Yeah. Why not cabinet Stephen? Yep. And water broth. All right, my number four is a game that we both played. You actually like this one too. This one was the Spill of Jars one. So you played year. it that much at the end of the year. Yeah. Uh huh. I played. Uh, I played. All but one of the scenarios, I think. So that would be 15. I counted each scenario as a game. I micro, guess macro, how... crime city. Oh, sorry. Yes. Micro, <laughs> micro, macro, crime city. It's where uh, you for each other. And this is specifically the crime city one, not the full house one, which I do have, but I've not I've not gotten that one to the table yet. In this game, it's Where's Waldo for, right? For adults. I and guess. it's really fun. Yeah, so you have this map, and I'm showing you on here. Don't zoom in if you don't want any spoilers, but really, it wouldn't spoil anything. <laughs> <We already. laughs> You'd have to see the crimes. But yeah. you get this, this small stack of cards, usually about six to, I don't know, maybe ten, I think is the most cards that you have in the different scenarios. And it's giving you clues as you go, or giving you questions, and you have to go on the map to find out what actually happened, and you're solving the crime as you go through that. Now, there is a way to play the game. Where you don't look at the cards at all. You yeah. just look at the front. Have you played that way? I have not. That seems extremely difficult. It's not. We just didn't like it, honestly. Like, it was. It, I get it. I get why people would want to do that. But it just wasn't as enjoyable of yeah. an experience. I like going through the cards. Uh, I kind of thought the same thing. It's it's more, though, and I've said, where's Waldo? It's more than it because you have to figure out what's happening. There is some it's not just like, go find the cat in the tree. You yeah. know, it's like... Yeah. Well, why is the cat up there? And you trace, you know, people back and forth or something like that. You know, I don't even, that's not one, I don't think. I I was trying to make up something that's not there. Yeah, yeah. Um, But it's basically you're following these characters on the map and seeing what they did. And like, usually it's, you know, so-and-so was murdered in in this one. Now, the other one, Full House is a little bit different where it's a little uh, more family friendly, I believe, than... So far it has been. uh, In this one, there's some... There are some disturbing images in this one. They're just another cartoony for sure, but you might want to keep that in mind. And if that's something that uh, is appalling to you, you might want to go with a full house or version. something but with your kids to not show them potentially. That's but right. But I, I can't wait to get to full house. I was stunned by how much I enjoy this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My kids and I are really enjoying playing it through. Yep. All right. That's your number four. Number Micro, four. Macro Crime City. My number three is Renature, a Keesling Key- Cromer game that I really enjoy. I think it, because it gives me those homey feelings of those cozy art by, that's Dennis Lohausen, isn't it? Uh, by the Den- by Dennis Lohausen and laying the domino tiles. And yet it's like Root, how they took a cutthroat game and put these woodland creatures and you're like, <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's the same thing here. This is cutthroat as I'll oh, get out. God. You're placing trees and you're placing bushes and different things. And, but you're not, you're, you are trying to cancel out the amount of points because you're going for, um, uh, area majority, uh, in all these different areas. And you're trying to cancel out the other person's because it, if you put the same amount, 
as them, then hey, guess what? That doesn't count at all for the scores. And you have these neutral tiles that don't do you any good, except for they can score you points when you place them, but they don't do you any good for the area majority. But you're canceling out other people's and trying to like it's it's a cutthroat game in a like a cute grandma's kitchen package. <laughs> and I, I really like this one. It was one of my favorite games last year. Yeah, I think uh, a big reason why I haven't dug more into this one is because of the mean nature. But even I really like this game. I thought it was I thought it was fun. Not as much as you. This my is wife likes this game, even though she hates mean games. <laughs> For her, it's all psychological. Like, uh, I, I sit yeah. around and I talk to her about. It. I'm like, this is just as mean as this, but because you're not losing something from you know you're not killing somebody or taking someone destroying someone's building, you're okay with it. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. And she didn't love Root either, right? No, she okay. doesn't like Root at all. <laughs> That's right. She doesn't like Root at all. Bummer. Uh, all right, my number three was another new release that, that you know, going back-to-back -back micro, macro, and then Seven Wonders Archive. You've had a couple new releases that you played a lot this year. Yeah, yeah. And they're all, you know, quick one. Micro, macro takes, each case takes, you know, 10 minutes at yeah. the most or something like that. Uh, Seven Wonders Architect. Uh, my wife and I played this quite a bit. And you can play games in, in really about 10 minutes. It says 25 minutes on the box. And if you're playing the full player count up to seven players, then that might be the case. It's just really fast. But especially with two player, you can play super fast. This is another one of the Seven Wonders games where you're drafting. The difference is I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got a card next to me on either side of me and then a blind deck. And I, all I do on my turn is I take one of those cards, one of those that I can see or one blindly if I don't like those. And you are going to be building up your wonders. And the, the production value of this one is fantastic. You're actually building wonders in this one, which is really cool, where you can see it being built. It starts off as scaffolding and then cool. you flip it over. And I just, I really like this one. It's also on BGA. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, John, I've played it on Board Game Arena maybe 40 times this year so far. So, so if I'm counting that, then it's going to be my number one for sure next year. And I just keep playing it, keep playing it. I like it. But it takes like five minutes online. So not even five. Yeah. <laughs> You're not excited. I'm not gonna, no, I'm not going to say anything about the picture. It seems uh, kind of awkward. All right. <laughs> yeah, I should so, put another one out yeah, there. That would be go. great. All right, so that's your <laughs> number three is Seven, Seven Wonders, Wonders Architects. Architects. My number two is a game that it, uh, is Ascension, the deck building game, a game that kind of goes back to what you said, Dean, about going on vacation and playing it a lot. I brought this to one of my vacation to a vacation this year that I was gone for a week, and just a, a group of uh, folks that I introduced it to them the first time and they just love this game. And in, in, in Ascension, I mean, you're building a deck and getting points on your cards, but you're also going out and slaying monsters and getting points that way. So it's it's a very, a lot of people love this game. And I really do like it. I think Ascension is a really, really good game. My son also really enjoys this a lot. So it's a game that's really simple to teach. It really is pretty simple to teach. Yeah, like if you know deck building. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even if you don't, it's not that bad. Yeah, that's true. But it's not that bad. But yeah, and so it's 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 a great little it's a great deck builder. It would definitely be on my list. I think if I redid my deck building games, if I'm just going for pure deck builders, it would be on my list. I wouldn't say it'd be like my number one or anything. But I like Ascension. Yeah, it's a great game. That's okay. I used to play this one when it was good. when it was uh, the app. I guess it still is an app. I used to play it on the app a decent amount, but I don't I don't love this game. I didn't love it, but maybe I would like it more if I played it in person. Maybe not. Else. All right, my number two is... You're going to try some expansions too, you never know, right? <laughs> That's true, yeah. yeah. Imperial Settlers Empires of the North, which is a uh, Ignacy Chebyshek game. This is a you portal this game. game. I do. This is a game. It's it, Also, this one I mentioned earlier, Arnak, you know, that worker placement deck building. This isn't deck building, but it still has some of the same feels of like hand management. Gotcha. And then yeah. uh, uh, it, worker placement essentially is, is how it plays out. Um, but in this game, you are you start off with your own deck, and you are sorry, it's not clicking. You start off with your own deck, and you're trying to get the most um, uh, reach the the the. <laughs> <laughs> I feel much better. Good gracious! The the point you're, having to, you're having to click through while you're doing it. There's no reason why I should be <laughs> blubbering over my words. But I'm looking right at it though. So the point threshold is how that how that plays out in this game. But you are. Um, you're going to be basically collecting resources and putting new cards out. And the cards that you put out, you want them to match up with the resources that you're gaining so that you can use those to gain points and do lots of different things. I, I really like this one. I've liked all of the games in this uh, in this world, the uh, even the honestly, even the Roll and Write game I thought was fun, but I really enjoyed Imperial Settlers. I like 51st State, 
And then this one is my favorite out of all of those, and I've got it played quite a bit. Now, I did see that Imperial Settlers had that campaign thing that came out this last year, which is one that I, I played uh, several times too. It's uh, just outside this list. There's a new campaign scenario thing for Imperial Settlers Empires of the North coming out this year. So I can imagine this is probably going to be pretty high on my list again this next year. There it Love is. this game, Imperial Settlers Empires of the North. It's your number two. My number one is a game that I busted out with a few of my friends while we were hanging out at uh, a bar, I think. And that's Skull. And they went... I absolutely love this game, and they continued to ask me to play it over and over and over and over and over <laughs> again. I like Skull, Too much. but I don't now like you it. Hate it. <laughs> I, 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 it's getting to the point where I'm like, Ugh, whenever someone says I want to play Skull because they love this game. But if you like bluffing games, simple bluffing games, this is could be one for you. You're simply laying down a disc, and you've got four discs. Three of them have flowers. One of them has a skull. And when it comes around to your turn, you're either excuse me, laying down a disc or you're saying, mm, I think I can pick up three flowers. The catch is you got to pick up all your own tiles first. So if you've laid down a skull, you're hosed. Why would you do that? Maybe you would do that trying to hope that Dean would bid four mm -hmm. and pick up your skull or something like that. That's that's the whole game. You're trying, And if you pick up all the flowers that you said you would without picking up a skull, you get a point where you're halfway through winning the game. You do that twice, the game's over. That's it. You pick up a skull, you're losing one of your discs. You lose all your discs, the game is over. I just explained to you the entire game. It is it is really good for just fun, bluff, quick games, but it's definitely one that it is, you're going to have to have a group of people that enjoy it. You have that. to have the right people. If yeah. people don't like bluffing and stuff like that, I, though I do, I will say my wife generally doesn't like bluffing games, but this one she's fine with playing. Yeah. I would say it's her favorite, but she's like, yeah, no, it's fine. We'll play Skull. So I, I like it. Beautiful I, art. I don't know why I've never asked you this before, but have you played, because you and I have talked about this game a lot, have you played Liar's Dice? No. I prefer Liar's Dice to this, I think. All right, well. I think. Are you telling me the truth? It, the re yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> I ain't lying. Um, but it's really similar. So if you like Liar's Dice and have not played this, you probably okay. might want to check this one out because this one is, I would say, uh, quicker. And well, It's like it's a small box and like literally you could be in a bar, you could be anywhere. They're like yeah. coasters that you're playing with. That's that's that's. It. We played it. We I went on a trip with, a, with a, a group of people. We were playing in the back of the van. Like, we're just laying mm. them down on the things. Cause, and those are the reasons why I've played it the most amount of times, for sure. Yeah. And my buddies are like, let's play. Let's play. Let's play. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. Oh, I forgot I'm, to bring it this time. I, I, let me, hey, you know, I'll tell you this. <laughs> I've shifted one of those groups to this game. Oh, really? Oh, this is a great game. Oh, yeah. This should have been on my top ten list. That's Remember, right. I forgot to talk about that. I, I wasn't recording my plays of this game. This would have made my list if I would have... Put it in my BG stats. This is this is a little bit like my, this is the crew, the quest for Planet Nine. There's also the new one that I've I now have, but I've not had a chance to play it yet. This could be my number one as well. So what a share number one. It's, like, it's kind of a, a weird one though. It fits in that micro macro in the sense of like, should you count each play as a play? And or that's sitting, what I did. Play in a sitting, yeah. And I did it honestly to kind of help me, you know see how many like scenarios I've played through but this is a trip taking game that's cooperative which is right off the bat you know something that piques my interest I bro think. I this last week I sat down with a group of guys it was like 10 30 I think we're all a little bit tired and we tried to finish one mission and failed it like 10 times and just quit <laughs> do you know which number it was no okay. I can't remember it, it wasn't was, like the first one really. no okay <laughs> no but it wasn't I don't, didn't feel like it was really I think it was we had to win five tricks oh, okay and like it didn't seem like it was that hard but it was like someone kept making a boneheaded decision yeah. every time we're like are you kidding me and that was me one time i was like what am i doing yeah i think we were just kind of tired and not super focused but we had a good and, time you know that's why i kind of like this one it, it kind of eases you in if it's somebody who doesn't mm -hmm. really know trick taking i think this could be a starting place because sure it kind of eases you in the we talked about a guy is, that, that didn't know trick taking that's and, and he is what he loves it that's good to know the problem is if you go to the harder ones and everyone knows how to play trick taking games, they might get really frustrated at that person who doesn't know because you. There's some in trick taking games. Sometimes there's obvious moves to make, and sometimes there's you know maybe not as obvious moves. But sometimes you're like, oh, that was completely obvious. And I've made those really boneheaded moves, even though I've played this game. Oh and, yeah, and trick taking games a I'll long time for us, years. At least one of the games. But anyway, like John said, you're you're trying to do these scenarios of like take this many tricks, or or this person has to get this trick before this person gets this trick or there's lots of, or, or you have these communication tokens that allows you to give one piece of information to the other That's players. Cool Sometimes you won't be able to do that depending on the scenario. So there's lots of cool things. And then the new one I think is, I've heard it really good things that it's better. I haven't played it yet, but I, I, I can't wait either. to play it. 
That's it. That's our top 10 games most played last year, 2021. That is it. That is it. So I'm looking forward to seeing now that, like, now that we're going to 2022, John, is the fact that we did this list going to skew the games that you played this year? It's going to change. Sure. I've already played A Feast for Odin, and I've already played Glenmore 2. You want to make sure that they make I, the list. I, I don't know if I want to make them make the list, but I want them to have a better chance. Yeah, like, yeah. I, it made me go, I really want to this year focus on playing some games I just really love. More. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I want to get geeked to the table and some other stuff, but... There you go. I think one of my top 10 games, as I said, made this list. That's it. I'm surprised Gink didn't make our list. We played that. I yeah, I know. One, I feel like. But I think anyway. I guess I didn't play it more than four or five times. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah, that's it. So look forward to our 2022 list next year. But until then, you can still watch videos that we have on here. That's it. And tell people how they can get in touch with us. If you're enjoying our channel, we'd love for you to subscribe to it. If you'd like to support what we're doing, go to patreon.com slash MeepleTown. We're at MeepleTown Games on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Every board game, Geekyo 3407. Thanks for coming down to MeepleTown. Thanks for joining us and thanks to our Patreon supporters for making content like this possible. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash MeepleTown. To follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, find us at MeepleTown Games. Finally, to connect with us and other residents of MeepleTown, you can join Guild 3407 at BoardGameGeek.com. Until next time, thanks for coming down to MeepleTown.